to my channel and today we're gonna be doing another story time I've done a few story times on my channel before and I the last one I did I believe was my best race ever I feel like it's very fitting let's do my worst race ever and I couldn't really distinguish like one really bad race so I have three that we're gonna be talking about today and <laughs> I wish I had race footage from any of these, but I have none, so I apologize, can't show you any, but instead you'll just get to hear about it from my wonderful perspective of me being in the moment and just having so much fun doing it and dying. It's funny how all of these actually seem to be in college. Uh Literally zero from high school I could think of. Oh, well, there's some from high school that were bad, but the ones that are just fresh in my memory are the ones from college, so I'm kind of surprised that these aren't all cross-country related. <laughs> Two of them are cross-country related, so one is track. But the first one we're going to start off with is freshman year of college, and Emma was actually at Vanderbilt University. If you guys didn't know, I transferred to Oregon the winter of my freshman year, so I was at Vanderbilt for one semester and I ran cross-country there in 2014. And I would say I did pretty decent in cross country. I feel like actually in high school, my cross country performances went down instead of up. So I did better than I expected my freshman year of college, but there was one race in particular that really got me. Um, you know, there's a transition from high school running 5Ks to college running 6Ks. So that was what I was something I was nervous about, but you know, I ran a few 6Ks and it was fine. I ran one 5K and one 6K before this specific meet, which happened to be the Roy Griak Invitational. I know a lot of you guys are high schoolers or you're people that are like from the Midwest area that run the Roy Griak, but uh, let me tell you right now, that course is brutal, okay? That's the hardest cross country course I've ever run on in my life. I remember running it the day before and I was like, mm, this seems really hard, but you know, it's doable. If you're from California, you run Mount Sac, that's really hard too. So, you know, I was like, okay, if I can survive Mount Sac, I can survive these like little rolling hills of Roy Griac, you know? And it was a 6K, so that's a little longer than I was used to, but I was like, you know what? We can do it, you know, we can push through. <sighs> little did I know what was coming for me. So, the reason why I'm sharing three stories is because a lot of these like stories I don't really remember much from the race, which is not good, because that means I'm not present when I'm racing. Anyways, so the gun goes off, bang whatever. I don't remember exactly what race we were in, but we were in like the elite race of the college, whatever. So we go out, you know, swarms of people out in front of me, of course. Um, and from mile one, I remember I was like, this is not going well. Like I was already not feeling great and I wasn't positioned super well. And that's not what you want to feel one mile into a cross country race that's almost four miles long. So that made me nervous. And <laughs> I think my mile split was probably like 550, which again was not great. So the combination of not feeling good, time not being slow and me not being in a good position just really didn't put me in a good place. So at this point I was like, all right, this is about to be a survival of the fittest. I don't even remember much of the race. It's all kind of a blur. Um, I literally like was, I all I remember is dying. All I remember is going up these hills and just dying. Like they're not amazingly like, steep hills, but it's just constant rolling hills. It's never ending. And my, my mile splits, I remember, were just so slow. They were getting slower and slower with everyone. I was just dying and fading. People were just surging past me and I was like, oh no, out the back, out the back, you know. At this point I was like, okay, I just need to make it to the finish line here. Like I was not even thinking about performance. I was like, don't drop out. Like, <laughs> you know, everyone kind of goes through that little thing in their mind. When you're not having a good race, you're like, mm, do I tap out? But no, you don't actually tap out. It's just a little thought that goes through your head and you're like, no, that don't be ridiculous. So the happiest moment of my life was when I saw the finish line. I was like, get me across there right this minute. And I definitely did not sprint at all. Yeah, I crossed the finish line and immediately face planted. I don't remember if my spike got caught. I think it did get, get caught because I'm not really one to just collapse after a race. Usually I'm the one like helping my teammates stay up on their feet. So I'm pretty sure my spike, my spike hit like the mat or something and I face planted. And you can see it on like a live stream thing that they took and I was like, that's embarrassing. From the moment I collapsed to about 30 minutes later, I have no recollection. I don't know what happened. I've never even been close to like fainting, passing out anything at any other race 
ever in my life. It was the weirdest feeling ever. But yeah, I whatever, face planted, and I guess my trainer was like carrying me back to our little tent area. And, and like, I guess I just like kind of like came back into consciousness or something. I was like, what happened? <laughs> it was so dramatic. Like I am not a very dramatic, okay. Okay, I am a very dramatic person, especially when I'm telling these story times. But like, when it comes to after races, like I'm not dramatic at all. I'm never, I never have been to a medical tent in my life. I guess I kind of like fainted after the race. And the worst thing was is that I placed 96th and ran a 23.01, which was like a minute and slower than my 6K PR. So I got like a hundredth. It was just, I don't know. Roy React is the hardest race course I've ever run in my life. So I am so glad that I only had to run that one time. So if you have to run that a lot, props to you because that course really just makes you mentally tough. All right, now we're gonna move on to 2016. This was my junior year of college. I was at Oregon now. And what do you know, it's another cross country race. I had actually been doing pretty well in cross country this year. Um, I was scoring for the team in all of our races and I was feeling really good, my times were dropping. So I had run, I think two races before that, maybe three. I ran a 2027, I believe in the 6K at UW, um, like a week before the pre-nationals, which is in Terre Haute, Indiana that year. I feeling good you know going into the race you know everything was super normal breakfast was normal warm-up was normal everything was normal dinner night before was normal and honestly the first 5k was normal so usually I like my teammates and I ran in a pack I hear a couple photos of that race and we were all together in a pack that's how we ran and we we're all pretty much like similar speed so it was super nice to have my teammates there you know encouraging along the way but I remember distinctly, like we were running really well. I don't know exactly what place we were in, but I think it was top 30, all of us. I was feeling great, you know? Usually I'm dying by 3K, but I hit 4K, I was like, all right, still sticking with the pack, okay. But then I hit 5K. And I literally, I would almost categorize it as backwards running. I don't know what hit me, but it felt like I got hit by a truck. I think my pace went from five minutes to seven minutes. I couldn't run anymore. Like it was the most absurd feeling I've ever had. Again, something that's never happened to me in a race before where I completely hit the wall with 1K to go. Like I didn't feel like the first 5K I was overexerting myself at all. It was really just something physical happened to me. Like usually when I have a bad race, it's mental, but pre-nationals was a race where it was just purely physical, but I still don't know what happened in that 1K. I wish I had my split on it, but that 1K, I was struggling so hard to make it to the finish line. There, here are some more pictures. It's honestly so embarrassing. I'm basically walking. My knees are not lifting off the ground. Um, Emma the knee lift gal is really kicking in here. But yeah, I ended up running 2108, which I mean, it's not horrible, but just considering how I felt the last K compared to the first 5K, it was honestly really embarrassing. So I hashtag the picture on Instagram, <laughs> ducks fly together, Emma dies alone. Cause all my teammates ended up doing super well and I just went out the back um, with, 1k to go so thanks team see that's why having a solid pack is really important because your teammates will be there for you when you're having a really bad day so thanks squad because you really carried the team that day and i did not <laughs> all right the last one we're going to talk about is the 2017 dr sanders mile in new york city at the armory i've had quite a few bad races in my time you know it's it's bound to happen you can't have good races unless you have bad races but one distinct one I remember was this Rust Buster Mile that we did coming into indoor season in 2017. Um, this is my first time running in the Armory. I hadn't had much experience running indoor track before this because I had been injured freshman and sophomore year. So this is really my first, this was, I think this is my first time running on a 200 meter track, I'm pretty sure. Honestly, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, but I had come off a good cross season. Um, I was feeling really in shape. I had good winter training um, where I didn't die during one of my tempo runs. So that really gave me a lot of confidence. Confidence that my winter training was solid and so going to this mile I was like all right yeah let's do it we had, there was a ton of a ton of my teammates are running it's not a huge meet but there were definitely like competitive people from different schools um, especially on the East Coast I think UCLA was there Columbia I honestly don't really remember it's all a blur again bang the gun goes off and <laughs> 
first thing I noticed, I was like, this is a lot different than outdoor track. People are just all over the place. It's so aggressive. And I, one of my weaknesses in track is that I'm not aggressive. So this was like a whole new ballpark to me going around like the really tight turns and people are like fighting for position. I'm like, bad. Ah, I'm like getting ushered out into lane three. But besides that factor of it, um, I remember hitting 400 meters in and that's when I usually know if I'm gonna have a good or a bad race like if I'm feeling good or if I'm feeling not and I felt bad we went out in like 72 and I was like oh no this is bad because like I felt really bad and that's like pretty slow um for me going out in a mile especially like when you're trying to break 440 you don't want to go out two seconds off pace um so at this point I was like oh no and again like just slowly and surely like my teammates just started getting away from me the pack just started getting away and Emma just started fading off fading off and at this point I think I did mentally check out as well I mean I felt bad and I mentally gave up so that combination you know what you might as well just go call an L because I was a loser that day I think I went through like the 800 and probably like 220 to 223 24 somewhere around there but then, you know, coming around the final 200, I was like, all right, just give it everything you have. You might as well. And yeah, I was still just dying there. I see people like trotting ahead of me. Just I hear people on the screen, Sam Nadell is winning. Coming back to the armory. That's my teammate from Oregon. And I like look at the other side of the track. She's already finishing. I'm like, oh. This is embarrassing. And you know, I come down that final however many meter stretch um, in last place. And people are giving me that good old pity clap. They're like, come on, Emma, finish. Come on, Emma, give it all you have. And at this point, I'm like, please. Please shield your eyes. This is just pure embarrassment right here. I finished in 453.25, which is the slowest mile I think I ever ran in college. So, and I got last. So, <laughs> It wasn't a good feeling. So that's another race I'll remember forever. I got last, uh, I think another time in college too, but so it happens. I guess the big takeaway from this, these story times is that literally everyone has bad races and you no, you don't necessarily know when they're going to come. So I try to go into every race with the same expectation that this is going to be the hardest race of my life. Um, so I get, so I mentally prepare to be in the most pain I've ever been in. And that seems to help me. I don't think I was ready for the Roy, Gre Roy Griac pain, but came anyways. And I think the best thing that you can do is honestly just take it for what it is, take the L and move on. The funny thing is that after that Dr. Sanders mile, two weeks later in the next race I ran, I ran 439. What is that? A 14 second drop and a PR and I broke 440. So obviously it's just the day. You don't know what's going to happen. Sometimes it's not really an indication of your fitness level. Sometimes it just happens. <sighs> Love reminiscing on the hardest races. <laughs> Thanks for watching another story time on my channel. Let me know in the comments down below what other story times that you guys want. Even though these were bad races, I still like reminiscing on them because it's fun to laugh about them and just remember the pain that I was in back then. If you're not subscribed to my channel, and especially if you're a runner, you might as well hit that subby button down below because that's basically all I talk about on this channel. Big things on the horizon big things let me tell you now so i'm excited for the videos that are to come thank you guys for watching again for subscribing for your support i'll see you in the next one peace out fellas